Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacy, and I'm an infidelity recovery coach and I specialize in helping the unfaithful heal from their affair, end from their affair, and if you're interested in rebuilding your marriage, we work on that as well. Okay, so let's get into today's video. Today's video is about why couples fail after an affair. So I think there are many reasons why couples fail after the affair is discovered and they're trying to heal the marriage and they're not, it's just not working. So I want to get into four that I, four reasons that I feel like are um, some of the main causes of that. And the first one would be unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is something that will definitely prevent you from being able to open yourself back up to your spouse. Um, yes, it's painful when we find out someone has betrayed us, but if you're going to rebuild, it's very important to work towards forgiveness. Now, it's not something you're going to be able to do right away because um, forgiving someone is a decision. It's not necessarily a feeling. So whenever our thoughts produce our emotions and our thoughts are always on, oh, they betrayed me, you're not going to feel like forgiving. So it's really more of a decision and it comes over time. It's not something that's going to happen like right away that you're going to be like, oh my God, I forgive you. But you can, and some people do. Um, you, But in your mind, you want to work towards that. Hey, I want to work towards forgiving my spouse for having an affair. Um, I want to work towards how I see them. And it's very important how our perspective is for our spouse, you know, because we can, if we constantly see them in the negative, we'll never rebuild those positive feelings. Now for the unfaithful, when it comes to forgiveness, you want to offer forgiveness for whatever it is that you're holding against your spouse, like the years of un, you know, unsolved marriage problems, you know, the bitterness, the resentment, whatever you're angry with them about, that's what you want to work towards forgiving them for because if you don't then it's going to be hard to rebuild a marriage so unforgiveness is definitely something that both sides have to work towards doing and remember it's not um a feeling it's more of hey i'm gonna decide to let this go but what that means is i can't keep rehearsing everything they've done wrong in my head because the more I rehearse what they've done wrong in my head, the more I'm going to have negative feelings towards them and the less I'm going to be able to reconnect with them emotionally. So the next one is unrealistic expectations. Oh my God. I don't know why my nose itches every time I do a video, but it does. And it just, it like, sorry, I'm not going to edit that out by the way. Um, okay. Okay. So the next one is unrealistic expectations. That is expecting too much too soon. So on the betrayed side, it could be expecting sex way too soon. It could be expecting affection. It could be, I expect you not to feel pain, not to miss your affair partner, not to be any of that way. You know, like it's the affair is over and you need to be back to normal 100%. That's unrealistic. That's not going to happen. We have to understand that rebuilding a marriage takes time after an affair because it's not just the affair that you're trying to get over. You're also trying to get over the problems that were in the marriage before the affair even occurred. So it takes a while. And your spouse, the one who had the affair, they fell in love with that person. Most likely they built a relationship. They had an emotional connection. That doesn't go away overnight. It's a slow fade. We can't expect them to feel perfect. If that's something that you, you know, as a betrayed, feel like you can't watch or you can't handle that, then, you know, you might want to consider that. But it does take time. It is something that they're going to have to go through. Now, on the unfaithful side, the unrealistic expectation is that your spouse is just going to be okay right away. They're not going to be okay. They're going to be maybe more clingy, maybe more anxious. Maybe, um, you know, they're triggered, so they might explode a little bit more than usual. They might want to know your whereabouts more. There's going to be some things that change, and we can't expect to go back into the marriage the way it was before because there's been an affair 
and some of the behavior of, hey, I need to rebuild trust, so we need to set up, you know, a trust plan, that kind of stuff, that is to be expected. You can't go back in expecting that you're going to have the freedom that you had before because you broke that trust. So that is another problem. The third problem is pain. This is where couples on both sides, they get stuck. I just made a video about the unfaithful, how they get stuck. Not necessarily how they get stuck, but how long it takes to get over an, an affair and why it takes so long for some people. So the pain of losing the affair partner, the pain of the marriage and hurting their spouse and just everything, all of that can weigh heavily on the unfaithful and the shame and the guilt. And it can be really hard for them to move forward because they feel so guilty because they have all of this going on inside of them and they don't know how to process through it. A lot of times the unfaithful is expected to bury their feelings and not confront them and that just makes it way worse. So you'll never get the marriage that you want until you get over your affair partner. So we can't bury our feelings. We have to address them. We have to move forward. That's my job. That's what I do as a coach. I help you learn how to process through your feelings and not get stuck. So pain on the betrayed side is when they get stuck in the triggers, the questions, the memories, and they just can't let go of the pain. Now they need help as well. If you're a betrayed spouse and you're listening to this, you need help as well. You need professional help that can help you learn how to manage the pain. My husband, he works with the betrayed spouses because he likes to take them through the same process that God took him through. This is how I handled triggers. This is how I handled intrusive thoughts. This is how I handled the pain and the mistrust and all of that. Everything that goes along with what the betrayed is experiencing, it's important to have someone who has been through it and knows how to get through it to help you get through it as well. My husband is there for that. My His information is on my website, so there's a link in the description. Um, and there's a little tab on my website that says for the betrayed. So if you want to learn how to work with him, you can go to my website, click that information, and he has, you know, he talks about it and leaves his contact. So the fourth one is the lack of effective communication. This is where our attachment styles come in. They play a huge part in rebuilding your marriage. This is what helped my husband and I to really get to that place of unconditional love, working on our attachment styles because we don't know how to effectively communicate. And if you're avoidant, you can be very um, dismissive. You can get very dis defensive, gaslight your partner. You won't in it. What it looks like is if your partner says, well, this is something you did that hurt me, you won't address that pain. You'll see you get very defensive and turn it right back around on them. That's a uh, protection mechanism for the um, avoidant. That's how they cope. And for, you know, if you're anxious, then you'll get more clingy. You'll, you know, you can have like outbursts and that kind of thing. So to have effective communication really starts at the root. Let's heal our attachment wounds so that we can learn how to communicate with each other because communication is the key to rebuilding your marriage. Now, I do have a program that where I work with my clients on how to heal their attachment style. If you're interested in that, you can also click the description box below or you feel free to email me and I'll send you some information. I hope this video was helpful for you. Remember guys, rebuilding your marriage is definitely something that God wants to help you with. He wants to partner with you and show you how to have a fulfilling marriage, but we have a part to play in it. And if we don't play our part, then we're not going to be able to see the results that we're looking for. Okay, I hope you have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye.